Good afternoon, I'm Malcolm Jordan and this is your Midday News Fix for Friday the 1st of November. Philip Polkinghorne has left the High Court in Auckland again, this time with a conviction. The retired eye surgeon's been sentenced to 150 hours community work after admitting a meth charge, more than a month after he was acquitted of murdering his wife, Pauline Hanna. His defence team sought a conviction and a fine, but Justice Graham Lang stated a fine wouldn't be sufficient given his healthy financial position. Lawyer Ron Mansfield says Polkinghorne has faced a very public fall from grace. He's now, unfortunately for him, a household name, not reflective of his work within the community. And the Prime Minister says he doesn't agree with Mike King's comments around alcohol, but he thinks Gumboot Friday does great work. King told News Talk ZB that alcohol is a solution for mental health problems as it can help stop negative thoughts. The Labour Party's called for the government to pause funding for Gumboot Friday. Christopher Luxon says alcohol harm is a major issue, but they're very supportive of the work of Gumboot Friday. I appreciate the opposition want to make it a political issue. I just say I wouldn't play politics with youth mental health. The Commerce Commission has followed through on plans to file proceedings against jib manufacturer Winstone Wallboards. The regulator is accusing the Fletcher Building subsidiary of anti-competitive conduct over its rebate structure. Winstone says it's discontinued the use of the rebates in 2022, the same year it came under scrutiny for jib shortages pushing up construction prices. Fletcher says during the Building Products Market Study, the regulator found that such structures didn't reduce competition and it will fight the legal proceedings. Exporters are being given greater access to Middle East countries belonging to the Gulf Cooperation Council. A free trade agreement has been made after nearly 18 years of work, providing a sizable boost to the annual $3 billion of two-way trade. It comprises Saudi Arabia, UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, Oman and Bahrain. Beef and Lamb New Zealand Chair Kate Ackland says the GCC is forecast to be one of the fastest growing regions for red meat consumption. You know, it is absolutely a positive sign for the future and you know, hopefully there's more of these types of agreements to come. A host of funded medicines are becoming available today for people with a range of health conditions. Coupled with those made available in October, the new medicines will provide treatment for an estimated 10,000 New Zealanders in the first year. Four medicines have been added to the list of treatments for five different types of cancer. Four are also now available for severe psoriasis. There's also now another treatment option on the off on offer for schizophrenia, low iron levels, constipation and urinary tract infections. To sport, failing to meet off-field standards has seen All Blacks prop Ethan De Groot scratched for Sunday morning's test against England, while to Mighty Williams, Wallace Satiti, Sam Kane and Mark Talia are backing up from the Japan test. Black Caps captain Tom Latham will wait until late this afternoon to settle on an 11 for the dead rubber third cricket test against India in Mumbai. And the Wellington Phoenix women believe their fourth season in the A-League can finally result in finals football, despite boasting nine new faces after 13 transfers out of the squad between seasons. I'm Malcolm Jordan, that's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at 5pm from the News Talk ZB Newsroom.